Okay, so I'm going to answer this question from the perspective of like us, those of us in the room who Rafiki said we young people and we need to sign the paper. Um, guys, I got a lot, I have a lot of things I want to say right now. I have to say them very quickly. We, we need to really focus on developing strong organizations. And the reason why I say that is because, because I'm a Pan-Africanist, I'm always turning my eye to Africa. I just feel like that is where the answers and the solutions are for African people, no matter where we are. And when we look at the revolutions that have ha happened in Africa, we look at places like Guinea-Bissau, for example, with the PIGC. Those organizations all have really strong youth wings. First of all, they were organizations that were built by the youth, the PIAGC is continuing to have successes to this day, and it, may, it, it remains in the hands of the youth. But before we can talk about that, I think we have to look at the lessons that African organizations have taught us, that this idea of preparing ourselves is like a two-way street. So elders have to be ready and willing to provide mentorship and guidance and infrastructure, but young people, and this is something that we struggle with, and we're going to have to do some real self-crit about this right now, are going to have to be willing to discipline ourselves and accept structure. This is one of the biggest downfalls that we are having in movement building right now. Um, the first thing, we have to learn how to struggle. Because we are coming from the capitalist, colonialist sort of arrangement of things in this country, and especially if you went to university, you have been conditioned into like the gifted and talented, individualistic, my way is the right way, I have the right ideas, and the first time somebody doesn't listen to what I have to say, I gotta go. It can't work. Because it was so many people that came up here today and was like, we at war. Everybody was like, yeah! Well, how you at war if the first time something don't go your way, you done with the struggle? We did that heavy in 2020. We did that heavy in 2020. And it partially, uh, I'm, I'm not into the essentializing thing, so Rafiki really loves young people. I, I'm into whoever has the right ideas, right? Okay, 2020 came, our organizations were not prepared for the influx of young people who wanted to join them. Everything went virtual because of COVID. So there was already structural issues that existed in our movement. But on top of that, we, us young people, we came into these organizations and these movement spaces and blew up everything that we didn't like with no plans to correct or fix or salvage or repair. It, everything became Twitter threads, medium post call outs, Instagram slides. Um, harm, co abuse, conflict, everything was getting conflated. We blew up a movement in like three years. The FBI didn't really have to do anything. So I'm just saying like, I really love how much faith that the elders have in us in terms of being prepared and taking the baton and all these kind of things. But we did a part of discipline, and I've learned this through the party, like the Black Lives of Peace and the AAPRP have really disciplined me and helped me understand Everything has to revolve around a constant process of criticism, self-criticism. We have to be able to look at the things that we're doing wrong and adjust. And I feel like that is a key difference between a lot of the youth-led movements that we see in Latin America and the Caribbean and on the African continent and what we're dealing with here. We're not assessing. We're just imploding and moving along to the next thing, imploding and moving along to the next thing. At some point in time, we're going to have to discipline and commit and really sit with the things that are wrong and say we want to fix them. 